Well, I work with, with young people um, using arts and education as a, as a medium to generate their interests and for them to connect and re-engage with education and to find a voice, have a platform for that voice and to find emotional language to express themselves and to also kind of theorise and contextualise all of their, of, of their opinions and, and their ideas. This then can generate into material which they may perform, which they may develop, which they then may get accredited to go on to progress through education or any, any, any walk of life. That work has led us to listening to young people to do work with police in, in the UK. And the police themselves, um, having the bad reputation, want to connect with young people and improve their relationships. Now, what we found is, is by treating the police as a group, they're just human beings as well. And just kind of humanising them, allowing them to be human, allowing them to engage with young people not in uniform, just having conversations about you know, who they were, how they grew up, um, who they spent time with, and then to kind of look at human interaction and the causes for confrontation on a human level, objectively, and then put it in the context of an actual encounter on the street or with, with young people. We found that it's actually gone a long way in building relationships between police and young people, and a long way in terms of training, training the police, which again is just the beginning. And in terms of communities having a direct link, I think there's a disparity in communities where you have generations, like old generations can feel that the young generations are obviously doing something wrong or why they're getting stopped. And I think those, those gaps within communities are things we are not responsible for but need to be aware of. And I think we need to have an objective body that works with a community, which is the same team that works with the police, i.e. young people will never attend these meetings because they feel their purpose to. However, if you consult with them and talk to them and see what it is that they actually want to communicate and get them talking to each other, that's where the work starts. Then to get them to talk to their peers, who will be young, older young people who are still within their within their own realm, who they have respect for. They can be their initial community leaders, who then will connect with adults in their community, who will then give them a voice to take it to a platform and a, and a forum where they can express these views. Now the issue from a young person's and from a community's perspective is where does the conversation go? And what are the steps that are taken? Or is it just lip service? So whatever decisions are made, it has to come from on high. So people in power need to be involved and invested. And the young people also want this to be the case. I mean, we always underestimate young people who are just young people. For as we develop in age, our ideas and our views may change, but the people we are doesn't really change that much. And it's just older versions of ourselves. And most people's emotional development isn't that far from when they were teenagers anyway.